Hi there, this is Federico and the goal of this video is to give you an update on the pop-up zine I've been making and documenting on my Patreon, thanks to your generous support. And uh, what I want to show you here is the process of going from a handmade prototype into a digital version that can be printed and then cut with a digital cutter. I think what I want to do is to make a short run of these so uh, there has been a learning process in making them happen and this is part of it. In the first part I'm going to assemble the pop-up by hand to get a sense for the main mechanism and the placement of some elements and then in the second part we'll see how that translates into the computer. So let's get started. So this is the main idea. It's a pool tab that uh, pops up this butterfly. So I'm starting the build with a pre-folded page and I mark the margins that are going to contain my main elements. This is going to be the folder or the tent. I'm marking the center and where other folds are going to be and then some cuts. Then I'm using the bone folder to mark the folds and I'm going to place it back on the page to see what it looks like. So that's roughly the motion. Now I'm going to glue the left hand side tabs. That's what stays in place. Now I'm going to place the strip that pulls the tent open so that gets attached to the right hand side of the tent or the folder. And then we need to calculate where it goes on the opposite page. So I'm marking here the total travel with an X and then that distance gets divided in half, one half on the left hand side of the fold and the other half on the right hand side of the fold also known as the gutter. Now I'm carefully cutting it and folding it so it gets glued on the page. And a lot of this gluing has to be done by closing the page, confirming that everything's flat, and then that things open back up. Now I want to make a mock-up for the butterfly. So I'm just going to quickly sketch it and cut it. So I know the butterfly needs to have this sort of X configuration. So I trace the previous one, except I move the tab down. And now I'm going to glue it. And confirm again that things work. So with the main part done, I want to figure out the placement of my characters, the magpie and the possum. So I'm making this triangle that's going to give me effectively two more gutters to place the characters. So here I'm marking the glue tabs and the places where it folds. So it's a simple triangle that gets some corners chopped off, then some folds. And that's the placement. Then a little bit of glue, and it goes flat, making sure everything folds down. So the idea with this one is that you're effectively extending the center fold or splitting it into two sides, one to the left and one to the right. And then you can use those to place other pop-ups. So here I'm cutting some classic V-folds that are going to hold the characters. A little trimming necessary. then some glue and as usual you gotta glue things down by folding it back down and then i confirm that it works and i added a similar one on the right hand side then a quick sketch of my bird to check the composition So I glued it in place and checked if it worked, but I wasn't satisfied with the angle. So I decided to take it apart and try another technique. So to change the angle, I decided to try this strap that has a similar effect of splitting the main fold in half, but the other folds uh, remain parallel. 
So at this stage, I'm mostly guessing the dimensions. So I need to check if it goes outside or check the actual angle line. That seems too tall, so I decided to trim it. And that seems about right. So you can see here how this fold translates into new gutters on the left and the right. And then I added the V folds and then the animals. And I think this is my rough sketch. Now let's see what it looks like on the computer. Okay, so here I have a brand new project. And my first step is going to be defining the size of my unfolded page. So I'm going to grab a rectangle and I had previously decided that is 6.5 by 4.6 inches. I'm going to call this component the page. I'm going to be working by defining each element as a separate component. And just to make it nicer, I want to round the corners. I'm going to do a 0 0.1 inch radius. And I'm also going to make it white. So I'll change the fill to white. And I know that this page is going to have a fold down the center. And in order to do that, I'm going to make a line. And just to differentiate the fold from a cut, I'm going to give it a, I'm going to make it red. Now I'm going to create a new component and I'm going to call it a sketch. It's going to be a sort of work area for me. And there I'm going to drag my page place it in the center. And now I'm going to place some guides. So I know where I'm going to be placing the other shapes. So I'm going to drag a guide from the top and snap it to the bottom of the page. But I actually know that I want that guide to be a quarter inch up. So I'm going to subtract a quarter inch so it moves up. And similarly, I'm going to drag a guide from the right to the right ed edge, and I'm going to do the same. I'm going to subtract a quarter inch, so it moves a little bit to the left. So I know that that folder, or that folding V-shape, is going to be a new component, uh, so I'm going to create it. And I know that's going to start as a rectangle again, that is about two and a quarter inches wide and one and a quarter inches tall. And I'm going to place the folder where I want it to be. So I know in its completely unfolded position, it's going to live there. So the first thing I know about this folder component is that it needs a line down the center as the fold line. And I want that line to belong to the component so I can go back here and add the line and as you can see when I go back to the sketch the line is there with that component and sometimes it's more convenient to do the edits uh, while I can see everything else so in order to do that I would have to double click into the component to go into this focus mode and then I can also make changes so for example now I want that line to be red as well because it's a fold and if you go back here to the folder component, we see that the line is red. So one last thing I want to do with this one is I want the fill to be white. And next, let's add some tabs. So I'm not going to go into detail about how the tabs are constructed. I'm going to grab them from another project. So I'm going to copy and paste them uh, into this project. So I'm going to create a new component and I'm going to call that one the tab. And then over here off screen, I'm going to copy and paste it. So this, this is my tab component. We'll see how it works in a moment. And then I want also a place for the tabs to go into. So I've called that one the slot. So I'm going to create another one called the slot. And I'm going to copy and paste it from my other project. So I can reuse it here. So this lot is a sort of cut. So 
So one thing I know is that my folder component needs a sort of flap on the right hand side. So I'm going to use a tab to create that. So with this tab, tab component, I can place it where I want it and then move it by the handles to get the right length. So this right hand side is going to be loose, but then the one on the left is going to uh, have to be attached to the page. And so in that case, I'm also going to use tabs. So in this case, I'm going to make two because it's going to need a gap in the middle. And I'm going to make these about 0 0.3 inches. I can see the length here on the right hand side. And so similarly, I'm going to grab another one and place it here. And I'm going to make it 0 0.3 as well. And the next step is going to be adding the slots where those are going to be. So I'm going to use my sketch here. And so because I know how long those tabs are, I'm going to place them on the sketch by using this slot component. So I know one is going to go here. And the length of that specific one is 0 0.3. So I'm going to determine the length by entering it here. And then I'm going to place it with this handle. This handle doesn't determine the length, only the position. So I'm going to snap it to this point, to this line. Now I'm going to duplicate that one and then bring another one down here by grabbing the handles. So what this allows me to do is I can actually hide the folder component, but then the slots are placed where I want them on the page. The next component I want to design is going to be the pull tab, that long strip that pulls the folder. And I know that at least starts life as a rectangle. It's about three inches long and let's do 0 0.3 wide. And then just put it in place to see roughly where it needs to go. So I'm going to center it in relationship to the folder. But then I'm going to move it a bit to the left. Maybe hold shift while moving it so it only moves horizontally. To determine the length of the pull tab, I'm going to use some guides. I'm going to visually place a guide here on the edge. And I know that the amount of travel is about half an inch. So I'm going to subtract half an inch. And then I know that travel gets sort of split in half in between the right hand side of the page and the left hand side of the page. So what that means is if I place another guide on the center and then um, nudge it to the right by half the amount of travel, then I should know where that lands. So half of half inch is a quarter inch to the right. And so if this is x, then this is half x, which means I can double click into my pull tab. So I'm editing that specific component. And then I can change its dimension to how long it needs to be. And then I also know that the location of the slot where it needs to match is uh, half the amount of travel to the left of the center. So I could place another guide and then move it to the left by a quarter inch. And that's going to give me the placement of the slot. So I'm going to go back to the pull tab here. And so I can place a tab on that side because that needs to be attached. I know that is 0 0.3 inches. Then I need a tab on the side. That's also 0 0.3 inches. And then on this page, I know I need a slot here that is 0 0.3 inches. So I'm going to place it initially here. 0 0.3 inches. 
0.3 inches long and then I'm gonna grab it and move it to its final placement on this guide and then I know that this pull tab also needs a place to be attached on the folder and so I'm gonna double click into the folder so I have the focus and I'm gonna place another slot I could possibly use these as a guide to place it so 0.3 inches long I want it to be vertical and I want to move it to the right so I'm going to hold shift so the guide helps me place it where I want it maybe I'll nudge it over here so I traced the butterfly shape of screen and I'm going to paste it here as a new component so I only did half and it's based on a monarch butterfly to keep with the theme of native species native to California so I'm gonna go back to my sketch and just check if that's about the size that I want so um, I think that works so I know the two halves of the butterfly need to be attached with sort of like crossing tabs so I'm gonna create a couple of tabs by grabbing a rectangle and I'm gonna make it quarter inch and I'm gonna leave the length as is for the moment so I'm gonna check it on the sketch to see so I'm gonna bring the butterfly component here then I'm gonna choose the length of that I think something like half an inch makes sense and I'm gonna go back here to the butterfly I'm gonna add a tab so that's one side of the butterfly and I'm going to duplicate it so I know the right is going to be flipped so I'm gonna go to edit and flip horizontal and then I'm just gonna place it back on the center and I know that this one needs to have the tab at the bottom so I'm gonna grab that part and bring it all the way to the bottom maybe around here so now if I go back to my sketch I can actually check I'm gonna bring my right hand side of the butterfly yeah I have a lot of, I have a lot of components going on now I need to place the slots for the butterfly tabs into the folder component so I'm gonna double click into that one and one slight downside is that now the butterfly is not visible but I can turn these butterfly into guides temporarily so yeah, I can see them as a red outline and now I can place my slots inside of the component that I want so I know that slot is also a quarter inch long put the handle where I want it now I'm gonna duplicate it control D and then place it in the location that I want now let's put some final touches before cutting our first test so I'm gonna go check each component start with the folder so one thing that needs to happen is the tabs need to be joined to this main rectangle and I'm gonna select them and if I were to apply the regular boolean union my score lines disappear so instead of doing that I have a sort of modify, modified boolean union that only joins the black lines so this is a single shape that gets cut with those slots and yeah and it has uh, I'm gonna move it up here so I can see it and it has a full line down the center the pull tab gets a similar treatment so I'm gonna select it and apply my boolean union that joins only the black 
outlines. Then my butterfly gets a similar treatment. You should say both sides of the butterfly. Same here. And I think what I call this sketch is going to be the actual page with all the cuts. So what I need to do here is um, hide all the things I don't want. So I'm going to hide my folder and I'm going to hide the pull tab. And so I end up with just the basic page with the folder in the middle and then two slot, three slots, that is. And finally, to do my cuts, I'm going to create a cut component where I will pull everything I want as the cut. So the sketch, the pull tab, sorry, the folder, I have the pull tab, and I have the two halves of the butterfly. Save my file or export my SVG for Cricut. And let's cut it. So here's my file and Cricut Design Space. And the next step is only to select each operation. You can't see the colors on the canvas, but when I highlight each one, I can see that the color changes here. So these are all cuts except for the ones that are red. I can see that I designated those as scores. So I'm going to change that operation to a score and everything else is a cut and I need to select it all and attach. So when I click make it, it's all going to be on the same mat.